You've got a tune to KEXP at 90.3 FM. You can stream us live at kexp.org worldwide. Today we're streaming this wonderful in-studio session with Japanese Breakfast on KEXP's Facebook page. So I invite you to watch along. I'm Cheryl Waters, host of the Midday Show. So happy to have Japanese Breakfast back in the KEXP studios. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy to be here. It is so wonderful to see you. You're playing a sold out show at Numo's tonight. So we're very happy to have you playing some songs. The new record called Soft Sounds from Another Planet. Want to start us off with some music?
That sounds fantastic. Japanese Breakfast live here in the KEXP studios playing songs from the new record, Soft Sounds from Another Planet. That's out on Dead Oceans. Japanese Breakfast live here on KEXP. Soft Sounds from Another Planet is the brand new record. It's so great to have you all here. You sound fantastic. Thanks. We last had you in studio a couple years ago after Psychopomp came out. That was a very raw and visceral record written only weeks after your mother passed away. And I just think that record was so beautiful. And this record, I understand, started uh, as kind of a theme record, a sci-fi concept record, and that you aborted that idea just one song in, a wonderful song <laughs> it was. Tell me uh, what you wanted to convey with this new record. Yeah, I think that it was really difficult to tour on Psychopomp for a year and do the press cycle and talk to people, you know, three or four times a day about my mom dying. So I think that wanting to make a sci-fi concept record felt very protective and we had written this song called Machinist and um, it was about, it was kind of just like a one-off sort of song about a woman who falls in love with a robot and en enlists in the Mars One project. And I thought it was a fun idea to come up with this sort of sci-fi concept musical. But when I sat down to write the rest of the songs about that, it felt really heavy handed and terrible and not really wanted what I wanted to spend my time doing. So I think that the sort of space theme kind of infused itself in just what it was like uh, two years after my mom passed away and 
experiencing musical success for the first time and touring a lot and sort of using space as a way to kind of disassociate from trauma and grief and uh, yeah, just kind of take things a day at a time. I think that was sort of the theme of this new record. I understand that going on the road and, as you said, not only playing these songs from the last album over and over, but talking about them is difficult. But I can only imagine that you reached out and connected to so many people through your music and that you had, I bet, a lot of really meaningful interactions because music that's just that visceral can really speak to people. Yeah, it was unreal. I, it's a sad story. I mean, I've met a lot of young people who have lost parents, and it's it's never easy to talk about. And I feel very sad that we all kind of share this experience together. But I, I guess I feel good that uh, it's not so lonely when you make music about it. Speaking of not so lonely, you sort of have family out on the road with you. Um, can you want to introduce your band? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Craig Hendricks on drums. He co-produced the record with me, and it's his birthday today. Happy birthday! <laughs> uh, this is Devin Craig. Uh, he's playing bass. Devin and I used to play um, in a band called Little Big League together uh, before he left me, and then I got him back. Uh, and I wrote a song about it on Soft Sounds from Another Planet called Jimmy Fallon Big because he quit the band to be in another band that was going to be Jimmy Fallon Big. But then we got him in the end. And he ends up in a <laughs> band that's going to be Jimmy Fallon Big. I hope so. <laughs> it would really come full circle. And this is Peter Bradley on guitar, a lot of the records about him, my husband. Tell me about making the record. Um, I know that um, originally you, you grew up in Oregon, so you're a local gal, and you've spent some time in Philly and New York. Where are you living now, and where'd you make the record? <clears throat> I live in Philadelphia now, and we made the record at The Well, which is Craig and I's studio in Philadelphia. Um, and it was a really different process because Psychopomp was so haphazard and unplanned and started in Oregon, finished in New York over the span of like a year. And this was a much more concentrated process. It was just Craig and I together in a studio. We had like three weeks or something where a lot of the writing was done in the studio and between the two of us we played every instrument on the record and, and wrote all of the arrangements together. So it was a really intimate, kind of concentrated process. Um, it was really fun. It was good. You mentioned um, when you talked about sort of the sci-fi theme that you um, were kind of obsessed about the Mars One project. And I'm curious what captures your imagination about that. Uh, Do you want to live on Mars? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, I'm really just so fascinated with Earth that I think it would be terrible to live on Mars. But I think I was just fascinated by the type of people who would do that and actually a friend of mine had just been rejected from the Mars One project and was the one who was telling me about it. And then around that same time there was the Time Magazine article of the 100 people they had whittled it down to and a lot of them had families and had just made this dedication to progress that I thought was so fascinating and I think I was just really interested in the psychological elements of what it would be like to only be with four other people or eight other people for a prolonged period of time and what their accents would be like and what kind of vocabulary would emerge. And actually, when we were in Amsterdam, I met the CEO of the Mars One Project. So oh, wow. it kind of came full circle. It was really me. You've been keeping yourself pretty busy doing other stuff. I understand that you are trying to learn Korean and also Korean cooking. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you shared with your mother, although she didn't necessarily teach you how to do that. And tell me a little bit about some of the stuff you've been doing in writing and yeah, um, I just we just did this really amazing tour all over Asia. We toured China and Thailand and Japan and finished the tour in Seoul. And it was a really special experience to do that. I only have one aunt left over there. And um, she was very confused about what my job was. She was like, well, who paid? Like, what company pays you to do this? I was like, oh, well, you know, people come to the shows. And so it was really great for her to see us play to, like, you know, 500 people in Korea and be like, oh, this is your office. I get it now. And she came to the show? She came to the show, yeah. And, and, and she thought it was really cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I want to explore my, my culture more. And uh, I think that it was something that happened in a big way after my mom passed away because I'm, I'm half Korean and 
it almost felt like a part of, I had lost a part of that, part of myself. So I think that I do a lot of kind of exploring that part of myself now and, and search for her. So cooking and, and writing and learning Korean kind of helps me feel closer to her. Well, we love the new record, Soft Sounds from Another Planet. We're live in the KEXP studios with Japanese Breakfast and play another song for us. Japanese Breakfast Live on KEXP, The Body is a Blade, from the new album, Soft Sounds from Another Planet.
Oh, that's so beautiful. Japanese Breakfast live on KEXP. And some of the songs a little bit in that one, and especially on Diving Woman, I can just hear your own take on shoegaze. <laughs> and uh, I recall you went on, uh, you played a couple shows in Europe with Slow Dive. How was that? It was in the U.S. actually. Oh, it was? Yeah, it was so great. I've never met such amazingly talented and generous musicians. It was really a dream come true. Uh, you know, when you tour with a band like that, that just has no one left to impress because they're just so incredible, it's really humbling to find that they are also very humble people that want to get to know you and, and spend time with you. And so it was, it was a real honor. And, to tour with them. That's awesome. I was, of course, as a fan, so excited that they made new music and were playing. And you're right, not only so talented, but so generous and kind. I love that you were on tour with them. Well, thank you all so much for coming in. Devin, Peter, Michelle, Craig, it's so great to have you. you here. Thank you. The new album, Soft Sounds from Another Planet, it's been Japanese Breakfast Live on KEXP Seattle. Oh my God, those songs are so beautiful live. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.